This last five years has been a really interesting investment environment. In fact, it prompted us to write a paper a year ago, a year and a half ago, called, Yes, It's a Bubble, So What? And the point of that was you can actually define bubble in a fashion that will allow you to identify a bubble while it's happening instead of years after the fact. Uh, we updated that with a piece uh, uh, some weeks ago called Bubble, Bubble, Toil and Trouble, in which we took another look and spoke more in a more focused way about anti-bubbles. Bubbles are markets in which uh, some asset or asset class or sector or segment of the market is priced at levels where it's implausible that it'll deliver a, a risk premium, performance over and above bonds or cash. Uh, implausible unless you use extravagant expectations for future growth. And secondly, second part of the definition, markets in which the marginal buyer has zero interest in valuation models buys based on a narrative of here's why everything is great and on a presumption that they can resell to somebody else at a higher price. Anti-bubbles would be the opposite. Markets in which an asset or a sector or a country or an asset class is priced at levels that, that would make it uh, highly improbable that they won't deliver a risk premium, uh, near certainty that they will. Now, the second part of the definition for anti-bubble is the marginal seller doesn't care about valuation models. So whenever we look around and say, is this a bubble? We should also look around and say, are there any anti-bubbles? Now, is it profitable to sell a bubble? Absolutely not until the bubble bursts. You're going to look stupid until the turn happens. Is it profitable to buy anti-bubbles? Absolutely not, until it turns. And so it's the ultimate in contrarian investing to try to identify these extreme outliers. The bubbles will go on until they don't. And during that period of time, there's almost no limit to how high a bubble can go. You don't want to short sell a bubble because uh, the losses can just get out of control but you don't want to own them because they will almost certainly turn. Same thing, uh, the reciprocal on an anti-bubble is you do want to own those. You don't want to overweight them to a point where you can't tolerate the losses, but you do want to overweight them and enjoy the long-term benefits. And so, as we look at markets today, uh, in late 2019, we're looking back on a five-year span in which growth stocks, notably the FANG-type stocks, have performed extraordinarily well uh, outside the U.S. in the emerging markets, what they call the BATs, Baidu, Alibaba, and Tencent. Their tech stocks have performed extraordinarily well. Is this a bubble? For most of these companies, what assumptions do you have to make to earn a positive risk premium? extravagant growth assumptions that are implausible. Okay, that ticks one of the boxes. Does the marginal buyer of the bats or the fangs care about valuation models? Not really. They care about the narrative, the story of why this company is fantastic and poised to even greater heights. Um, so yes, you have bubbles there. Now, during bubbles, growth stocks trounce value stocks. What does that mean for Rafi? Rafi is a value tilted strategy relative to the market. You're weighting companies by how big they are, not based on how popular, how expensive they are. And by weighting companies on how big they are, if it's a company, a FANG type company, that in fact is a little company trading at lofty multiples, you're going to reweight it way down. The deeply out of favor companies in emerging markets, just as an example, the uh, state owned enterprises we think are in an anti bubble. People don't want to own them because they don't want to own them. 
It's not because they think that they're gonna, the valuations are too, too high. Uh, and so the opportunity for those to be overweighted in the portfolio, um, fundamental index will automatically do that. So because we have this stark value tilt, bringing down the growth stocks and pushing up the value stocks, whenever value loses, we have a headwind. Trailing five-year numbers for Rafi don't look all that good. Well, here's where it gets interesting. Rafi wins not because of its value tilt, but because of contra-trading against the market's most extravagant bets. What does that mean? Apropos of bubble stocks and anti-bubble stocks, it means that as a stock soars to new heights, you're trimming it. You're going to look stupid until the turn happens. As a stock tumbles to implausibly low levels, you're going to be topping it back up again and again, and you'll look stupid until the turn happens. But when value is losing, we move into a deeper and deeper value tilt. This year and 2015, two years that bracket the last half decade, um, have been awful for value stocks and value strategies. I have learned over the course of the 15 years that Rafi has been in existence, and I've seen this in country after country, region after region all over the world, when value is losing, we ratchet into a deeper value tilt so that when the snapback happens, when value rebounds, um, you win back the shortfall in astonishingly short order. Uh, in emerging markets, value was getting crushed in 2015. Rafi underperformed, best of my recollection, by uh, 800 basis points. In 2016, it outperformed by well over 2,000 basis points. Well, that's interesting. Now, value underperformed by 8% in 2015 and snapped back by 6%. So value almost recovered its shortfall. We recovered it two, three times over. That's cool. So when I see Rafi underperforming, I actually start to get excited. I start to think, I can't wait to see what happens when the turn happens. Sometimes it feels like waiting for Godot because you're waiting and you're waiting and it's not happening. In the play, Godot never comes. In the real world of investing, does anyone really think value investing is dead forever? Does anyone really think it's going to underperform forever? Of course not. It'll bounce back. And when it bounces back, we'll have the peak value exposure, the deepest value tilt of the cycle. So the snapback can be just wonderful. I can't wait.